Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey, Wine, and Wellness. Uh, this is episode number nine with Kevin Benegas. I've had an opportunity to work with Kevin um, at a big box gym, um, and Kevin has since moved on to run his own fitness organization uh, and operate largely as an online trainer specializing in weight loss. So uh, it's very topical that we're kind of early in the year and a lot of New Year's resolutions uh, revolve around weight loss. Uh, we're a bit long-winded in this one, but uh, I think you'll take away some good things. So. Uh, without further ado, this is episode number nine with Kevin Benegas. First thing is, what are we drinking? What's uh, your choice? I, what is, what is so this? So we got a this Pinot. Is... This is a cloud line. Yeah. Uh, I've not had it's a 2018. It's, uh, it's supposed to be pretty dry. Yeah. Uh, or we got the McConaughey special, the Long Jack, or Long Branch, excuse me. This is tough. This is a tough decision, honestly. So last night it was my cousin's birthday. Yep. I'm still a little hungover. Okay. Uh, Fuck it, let's let's go with the whiskey. The long range? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah, is this bourbon or, or okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Let's do it. Let's do it. I actually just read his book too. Nice. His, his book is pretty popular right nice. now, I believe. But uh, no, we uh, me and Sierra have a a little. Take that one. A little, this one's got a little dishwasher fluid on it, unfortunately. Thanks, sir. We got a Cheers. little date Thanks going for being on here. later. Oh, nice. nice. This will be your first one. First one of the day. Yeah. Mm. So give us some details about yourself. I'll do like an intro um, so, for you, but... Um, I'm from Honduras. Yep. Who's the Honduras. second person I met? My first boss out of college. Oh, really? My favorite boss I've ever had. Hopefully, Peter. Hope you see this one day. <laughs> Peter Argueta. Love you. Nice, uh, nice. Honduras native. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was born there. I uh, came here when I was two. Went back and forth a couple times. Yep. Um, went to school there as a young kid. Um, I was six. Went back when I was nine, thirteen. And just several times in between there. Yeah. I think. Um, most recently, we went in December last year. This okay. time, so uh, right before before you got locked down, huh? Right before uh, my grandmother had passed away. Mm -hmm. um, this crazy situation. So my grandmother had been sick for several years. She passed away in November, November 14th. Okay. And we planned on going to Honduras. Well, she wanted to be buried in Honduras. So we... Uh, she lives in Honduras? Or no, she, she lived here. Okay. She lived here. And she wanted to be buried in Honduras. Reasonable. My, her oldest son was buried there. Um, her husband was buried there. And I believe her, her dad was buried there as well. Um, so she wanted to be buried in Honduras. November 14th, she passes away, um, and then we don't get to, she doesn't get to Honduras um, until a month later, her body. Oh, wow. 30 days. Um, I mean, what, delayed? Like, dude, so. Long story? Like, okay. You don't need to touch that one. No, that one. I mean, it's, it's honestly an interesting story because, like, I, I, had never, I had never experienced something like this before. My, my dad handled uh, some of it, but my aunt's kind of took charge of, of the direction of how to get her body. Yep. They had already, my dad had already paid for it like 10 years ago. Okay. Right. The, the flight, the obituary, all of it. Well, yep. we go there and we arrive on like Friday. Right. So we get there Friday. Um, and she, her body's supposed to get there Wednesday. Okay. Before you, not after you. Supposed to get there Wednesday before or the following the following so I'm okay. there Friday so Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday and then she's supposed to be there. okay or Tuesday night something like at 9 p.m. or some shit right yep. <laughs> and dude fucking crazy sh situation so she's supposed to get there at like at Tuesday 9 or something and she doesn't get there American Airlines says yeah she's on her way what do you mean what the fuck do you mean where where Where's my grandmother? <laughs> Not like an Amazon package. Well, you know, it's, it's, it, that's, that's literally how it was being treated. You know, it's a funny story. We'll call, like, we'll make some yeah, calls. you know, yeah. some people are probably be like, yeah, let's fuck that. You're laughing about your grandma. But like, you got to find some, some kind of humor. And like, oh man, we had a great time. We, we got super trashed the whole week uh, with family. So, you know, so we're, we're there. She's supposed to get there Tuesday night. Well, me and my dad and some of his best friends from Honduras... We go pick up fucking 200, like, quarter chickens, dude. Whoa. 200 quarter chickens. Whoa. 
for like literally the entire neighborhood. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm telling you, Black so uh, I'm, I'm, dude, crazy. <laughs> so that uh, Saba is is where my family's from. Saba is probably about the size of Bloomington population. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm from San Pedro. San Pedro's uh, the largest city in in Honduras, mm -hmm. but most of my family is in Saba. So, anyways, okay. La Merigad is like a little. Co like a little neighborhood, right? Okay. And that's where they're all from. That's where they all grew up. Fucking, my dad's a street kid till he dies. Like, okay, it was, it was it was it was enjoyable to watch them, like, just be like. If you've ever seen um, Slumdog Millionaire, if you've ever seen that movie, okay. So think, just think of like some dirty fucking kids. Yep. Okay, and that's how they were acting, bro. It was great. Yep. Just like some street kids or fucking... And you see your dad? Yeah, my, yeah, my dad's awesome. great. So he's just like, you know, he's <laughs> drinking beer. He's he's fucking hanging out with, with his buddies. And this is yep. a, you know, Honduras is in a, 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 a rich country. So it's right. like, you know, dirt roads and things like that. And they're just yep. all hanging out. They're just dirty fucking... 50 year old man just drinking beer having like, time of their life yeah having, having, good old days. yeah absolutely you know it's it's his mom's you know funeral and whatnot but he's he's enjoying it uh so anyways we fucking get all this food yep neighborhood so, pitches into i'm telling you right now man at least 250 to 300 people showed up whoa tuesday night and my grandmother was not there. Not there. She didn't show up for her own funeral. She just the boss move. The boss move. She didn't show up. She's <laughs> already dead. She's, <laughs> She's fashionably late to her own She's funeral. She's fashionably right? late to her own funeral. <laughs> so dude, we got all this chicken, man. We're cooking it. And we're spending hours on hours getting everybody there. So yep. I'm like... I'm getting my aunt's my aunt from my mom's side of the family. I'm like getting a taxi for her, and like we're getting all these people there, and we're parking cars. It's a, yep. it's a mess. It's a beautiful mess, yep. right? So, we we essentially have a funeral without the body. Okay. I mean, I guess you can still celebrate the yeah. life. I oh guess. yeah, we were, yeah, absolutely. I I had I had like a I, I didn't tell anybody, but I had made like some. Mixed drink and a little yep. cooler, and me and my cousin that I was with last night, we're drinking. Yep. And uh, now we're having a we're having the best time, so honestly. Time. You know, and like, it, we had some cousins here that were like, "What are you guys doing? You guys are over there fucking partying and shit." And I'm like, "Mind your business. You should have yeah. been here with family and friends. Like, what? The, what? My grandma would get yeah. proud. If yeah, we had two hundred people here yeah. that know our family. Like, yeah, absolutely, we're going to sit here and cry. Turn. Turn. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get turned. You know, so. Uh, no, we're having a great time. We got all this food, though. So we end up, I think, till like 2 a.m. at the church. Waiting? Waiting and partying? Kind of waiting and partying. Kind of waiting and partying. So end up finding out that American Airlines says that she was supposed to be in Miami. And she's not in Miami. They lied. They straight up just so threw something out there here in Indy. Still. She had not left. She had, oh my God. <laughs> she had not left. Wow. She had not left. Um, Where does one sit if they are just like, is there like a, so actually I, I train a guy who, uh, he works for the Indy airport and he yeah. like, they, they do like the, uh, like when soldiers are overseas and they get shipped back, like sometimes mm -hmm. they're a hub for that. So they get certain areas and stuff like that for, for bodies, I guess is the word you use. But like, yeah. where do they, where is she sitting? Like, you know, I mean, you got in she, a coffin, just that's tough. You can keep bodies like that for like three months. Yeah, but like you, I'm assuming you can't do an open casket in any capacity. Yeah, we, yeah, we did an open casket. But does, does, how long does a body preserve? This like is not where I like three this months. Anyway. I, like three, three months, months without this type of decomposing. Or like three months, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. I, I had not, I, dude. Yeah, it's a wild situation. <laughs> so her, her body was the same way it was November 14th. Wow, you guys got a good mortician. Yeah, so the body was the same way. Um, man, it's honestly, the, the whole situation, even the, the day after she passed away, at the funeral, or the day that she passed away, even that situation was weird because my, my aunt, my oldest aunt, decided to tell everyone at the funeral and introduce a new guy to the family. And she's like in her 70s, right? Oh, so wow. she, she she introduced a new guy to the family. Not not only did she introduce a new guy to the family, but they're also getting married. Oh. 
seems like the wrong <laughs> to bring this up. So my dad's like, what the hell are you doing? The whole situation. Now, we don't have a crazy family. No one's like, you know, drama filled. It's just little weird situations yeah. are happening left and right. So anyways, Tuesday night, we go to about 2 a.m. We end up finding out she's not coming. Yep. Wednesday, we get told in the morning that she might be there at noon. Bullshit. She's still not going to be there. American Airlines is, is screwing everything up. We got people that showed up again because yeah. we thought that we would yeah. have her. Yeah. Anyways, we got people show up again at 12. Now, I didn't show up. I was sleeping. I was like, you tell me yeah. when me she's know. there and I will take a taxi or somebody can pick me up and I'll, and I'll be there. Right? Yep. Um, anyways, she doesn't get there. We're told that she's going to get there Wednesday mm -hmm. at 7. Okay. My uncle goes to San Pedro. San Pedro from Seba is a three-hour drive. Damn. Okay. Um, and it, mostly because the, the roads are just mm -hmm. up and down. It's not like... Check a 30 you, the whole you're not going to find the 465 in Honduras. It's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I, I wish. But, you know, it, that would make it so much easier. It would yeah. probably be an hour instead of... The, it's not. It's less flat there, I picture. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up and down. Yeah, it's, it's a whole lot of mountains. Anyways... He gets there, and they, the body isn't there. The body was supposed to be there. Body isn't there. And he just leaves. He doesn't question, like, hey. He just leaves. Where do you even go pick up a body? Like, if he wanted to go, that's crazy. Literally, a, like a cargo. Like a like baggage claim? Like baggage, baggage claim. claim. Whoa. The, 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 I don't know, what, what's the, the, the mortuary or, or whatever the hell the companies are called? They have to pick up the body. Man. With a family member. So, they're there. They say that the body's not there, and he doesn't question. He just leaves. And my dad's like, "What?" You didn't ask anybody, like, "Hey, my, can you uh, double dude, check, dude." My dad was heated because he's <laughs> he's the youngest one. He's the youngest one, but he's the one that's like, kind of taking care of everything yep. financially, and uh, he's letting my he's letting the older brothers and sisters. So he's taking care of everything, but he's still kind of playing little brother, defer, and yeah. and letting the older siblings kind of handle it. Some answers. So he's like. I'm heated too because yeah. I, I'm I'm like super involved, right? I'm yeah. super involved in the whole situation. I'm like, what? You, what do you mean you just leave? Like, We're, we got no question. We got 150 people at the funeral again. <laughs> they need answers. We, we got else. we got all these people. We're grilling out again. This is the third funeral because we had one here. We had the one with 200 chicken legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wednesday we have another one. So we tell everybody to go home, and then we meet back. That same night, she her her body ends up getting there like not seven p.m. when it was supposed to be. It was like nine. Yeah. And then and then it's a three hour drive. Man. So we're sitting there until I, honestly I think it was later than than nine. But we're sitting there essentially until three a.m. again, waiting for the body again. Still nothing. No, she finally came. Oh, oh okay. Thursday. Thursday, morning. Thursday morning, essentially, you know, 4 a.m. or whatever the hell, right? Dude, we're going. So then Thursday happens. Um, it might, it might have been Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday morning. Or I can't remember. I think it was thir the Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday. She gets there Friday morning, and then we end up, everyone goes to sleep for a little bit, and then we go bury her on Friday. Man, it's a crazy situation. That's rough. That's what I'm pits American Airlines. Yeah, who the hell says, like, hey, the body's going to be there. The one thing you can't doesn't... screw up. Like, you didn't screw up, like, uh... What's crazy... Somebody's dog getting delivered or something. Dude, like, yeah, this so... Your grandmother's like, it's final my, resting it's place. body. <laughs> dude, how do you it's misplace It's a body, that? dude. What's crazy about it is that... So, I have a fake tooth, right? Okay. And, and this plays into the, the story of it is that... I get there, and a couple months before I had, it was like June, yeah. July or something like that. So I had been not, I had not fixed my tooth. It was like loose for like five months, four months. Stressful. Yeah, I don't know. Irres <laughs> irresponsible. irresponsible. <laughs> so I didn't go to the dentist to get it like, you know, it like adhesive back on it. Super irresponsible. So anyways, we go down there, and my dad's like, I got a dentist friend. Let's get your tooth taken care of, and you know we'll get it nice. so much cheaper than what you would do yeah, in the bet. states. So um, I end up going to the dentist 
I think we got there Friday, and then Saturday is when we went to the dentist. Okay. He was like, you want me to make the appointment? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. So she recommends, she, she takes the tooth out, right? She's like, I can't, I can't put the same one back in, and it's this one, uh, the one on the right. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I can't put the same one back in because I have to create a new post. The post that was created for you yeah. isn't good. It, it, it's going to keep falling out. So in the meantime, um, I can give you a, I can do the post right now, and then I'll give you a, a semi-decent tooth. Mm -hmm. It's you know for a couple of days, and I'm like, damn! I only bought the plane ticket from Friday to Wednesday, or to Thursday morning. Okay. And because the funeral was supposed to be Wednesday, you can't push. So that that was my issue. So. Imagine she, her body's supposed to be the Wednesday, yep. right? And uh, by Thursday, still wasn't there, and that was when I was supposed to leave. So I had pushed it. I had pushed my plane ticket because of my tooth, not because of the funeral. I ended up leaving Sunday. Damn. So I pushed it. Imagine if I had not gotten the tooth situation handled, and I called the airlines, and they allowed me to switch the flight because. Now, granted, it was for the tooth. American Airlines, don't listen. Uh, <laughs> Please listen. <laughs> it was for the it was for the tooth that I had made the switch, but I told them they don't have to know that. I told them it was for the funeral. Yeah, because so they fucked up. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. That had not happened yet. Oh. I had made the change Sunday. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So that I can tell the dentist that same day, the family dentist. To go ahead and move forward with the rest of the mm -hmm. two situation. Yeah. Right? Thankfully, I had extended it to Sunday because the two situation was going to get handled like Friday or something yeah. like that. And because of the tooth, I was able to actually be present for the actual funeral. So if you wouldn't have, you would have missed. You would have made the trip and. Still I would have. have I would have had to pay for a new plane ticket, another grand, instead of getting it for free. American Airlines is going to need to cover that. It's crazy. Dude, so I, I haven't asked the family about what the hell happened with with if there was a lawsuit on that. Yeah. Because, dude, that that's that's crazy. You gotta imagine man. you probably have grounds. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you had booked like uh, you like get a, a you get a date and thing. everything. They yeah. literally said Wednesday at this time, body's gonna be right. there, and it's not. Right. So yeah, like if it, like the shipping delays is not an appropriate answer in that in that scenario. <laughs> yeah. So it's crazy. Right That's on. the Honduras intro. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so let's dive into your niche a little bit. So obviously, you, most of what you do is weight loss. Mm -hmm. How do you dive into that niche? Um, let's see. So LA Fitness, end of 2016, was, um, I would say, my real... So I opened up a gym 2015. I spent about six grand in, in like road equipment. Had a place on the south side. Um, it was really big. Yeah. Um, the owner of Big Red Liquors leased me out the space. Okay. Um, I still have to send him an email and thank him because he let me off the lease. Wow. He gave me a three-year lease. Yeah. And me and a cousin of mine did the numbers the other day. I would have been in debt to him thirty grand. Damn. When I ended the nice lease. Nice guy. Yeah, you need to thank that guy. I need to. I need to call him. <laughs> I need Today. to like to, like <laughs> some point at some point I need to just something yeah. and just yeah so um, I never spoke to him personally it ever everything was through his like accountant yeah but she would just say like hey we're gonna give you this because he said that he you know likes his blah blah and uh, so I opened up the gym but it was a lot of passion no. Strategy. You didn't lay the groundwork yet. Like, no strategy. No business plan. It was down. like, I want to get everybody to overhead squat 200. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. And, and that's like, you know, and I, yeah. there was there was no niche. There was, it was just, I took my L1, CrossFit L1. And honestly, if anybody's listening to this, is the CrossFit L1. You don't have to do CrossFit if you want to take it. It, it's just, if you want to see some people who are just fucking absolutely passionate mm -hmm. about what they do, the CrossFit L1 is like the way to go. 
That's the first. That's, no, I'm assuming that's the first level, right? That's the first, first level. level. I, I've done a few. I've done a few things, uh, or I've seen a few courses. I haven't done many. Um, I did one through LA Fitness, Triple AI, and ISMA. I don't know if you remember that one. I did that one also. And then, um, but that was like a two day thing. Yeah. And uh, doesn't uh, check the box. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, the CrossFit L one compared to a lot of other ones, I would say is, in my opinion is the standard for certifications or the, the, the beginning stages of getting certified because you're not certified as an L1. It's, okay. it's, just, the, it's just the course. Certification takes you, it is a different definition. Okay. But um, like ISMA, you take a test, it's, they give you a certification. Right. Um, the L1, there's a lot of the things that you learned at, I, at ISMA and at AAAI and whatnot. Um, but the fact is that at the L1, not only do you get passionate people, that's you know great, that's a huge part of it, but I, from what I understand right now, even in 2020, the L1 is one of the only courses that you actually demonstrate a movement, mm -hmm. coach your peers, and then also do the movements okay. in the actual certification. So there's actually some practical application. Yes. So, um, that was one of the, the things that I didn't know until after I took it. Mm -hmm. But when you take it, you leave out of there and you're like, I'm going to fucking open up an LA Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, dude, that story too is also another crazy one for a different day. But like, I, I got there is, uh, at Rich Froning's gym. I don't know if you know who Rich Froning mm -hmm. is. I, it was at CrossFit Mayhem. Yeah. Went to the CrossFit Mayhem and... Uh, Rich Froning wasn't coaching the class. He he had made an appearance. Um, uh, by the way, being in the same room as a Rich Froning, it's it's no joke. It's really? like it's radiant. It's I mean, radiant. He's like the Michael Jordan of CrossFit. Right? Yeah, he's the Michael Jordan of CrossFit. Maybe Matt but, Fraser now. I guess. Yeah, Matt Fraser now, but um, Back then. but Matt Fraser's like the LeBron now. Yeah, he's the current. He's the he's he's the LeBron Froning essentially. Like but the Froning Froning was the the. I wish he would fucking. Just come back one year. Just he does to, some team stuff still, doesn't he? Yeah, and he does some mm -hmm. team stuff. Mm -hmm. They both live in, in Cookville, Tennessee. Him and him and Matt. Uh, hmm. But dude, being in the same room as you're trying is crazy. It, it, you just feel like pumped. You're like, what do I do? <laughs> I'm just frozen. Like, <laughs> Will they say hi to me? Or? <laughs> yeah, you have a guy crush. Absolutely. You're just like, that's awesome. What do I say I'm gonna fuck this up. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> That's funny. But uh, no, so uh, James Hobart was uh, the guy. He's a CrossFit competitor that was doing the, the the course, and I've never, till this day, have ever seen. And I think that's probably where I got a lot of passion was from James Hobart and that course. My guy was crying. Whoa! Like almost. Whoa! Like you could tell in his face. That he was, he just loves it like that. Two phrases away from tears. Why? In what context? And but he was just so passionate, and and it, and it was like, I can't remember specifically what he said. I mean, it was twenty fifteen, right? And it, it was, it was so. I wouldn't say moving. I, I it wasn't like some speech that's gonna send you. It's not a Tony Robbins seminar. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, it was. It was just some guy that was speaking his heart on fitness and essentially saying, while some people will hate on CrossFit for whatever XYZ reason, mm -hmm. the name doesn't define what it is that we're trying to do. And okay, that's dude, cool. he just, and, and that's just me saying, it. I don't think he said that, but that's just what I will always re yeah. remember from that. And, uh, Holy shit. That's holy, cool. holy shit. Like, and that's really the only thing I can say is like, I've never seen somebody at a seminar or somebody speak on fitness the way that James Hobart did for those 15 years. He just put himself out there more or like he just, you felt like it was like real for him? Oh, 1000%. That yeah. was, that was the realest moment in fitness I've ever experienced in my life. It was like, you're sitting there and you're like, oh yeah. wow. 
It's interesting that he disconnected from the name too, because and that's kind of timely too. Because I think of, he, uh, yeah, I think he did disconnect from the name, if I remember. Like it was just, it, it was just like, we're here, let's let's make this happen the best way that we can, and we're not here to to joke around. We're here to legitimately help you guys yeah. do whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's just learn and and apply this as an athlete or as a gym member or apply this as a coach. It's cool. Um and. Dude, it was just like it's a pretty humble approach. He, cool. he literally like stabbed himself, opened up his heart, <laughs> and just let it all pour out. It was crazy. Uh, it's hard to do in front of a group of strangers, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and and even like I still think about it sometimes too. Like as a coach now, and I have like the boot camps, and I'll, I'll speak in front of people and, and and whatnot. But like, I try to be as passionate. But that moment, I don't think I could ever. Well, it's not I the just first he, time he did it either, though. Like, I don't think no, there. no. It was definitely not the first time he'd ever done it, but I'm sure he does it several times. And if he does what he did that day yeah. more than once, oh my god, I, he does. Uh, uh, like 100 percent kudos to him because yeah. holy shit, that was a lot of like, dude, it was passionate. But I, I took my L one, opened up a gym, went broke. I was 21. Yeah. Uh, there's no it's way to get that out of the way early. Everybody yeah, goes broke ones. Yeah, so st- at least stupid ones. broke. Uh, didn't really have much help. Um, I didn't even tell my dad I was opening. Really? None of my family knew. My cousin just drove by and he saw a sign that said Benetti's fit. <laughs> and uh, man, and he and he popped in. Like, hey, he's man. like, "Hey, it's your general." Like, yeah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. I posted <laughs> one picture of me leasing the space. Mm-hmm. It was like a selfie. And that, yep. that was it. And people were like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, because you got to be pretty sure that things are going to work. <coughs> People, like that social accountability, like mm-hmm. I'm posting like stuff in here, like if it fails, it's a public failure. That, yeah. You know, right? Like, so, yeah, that, that I think a lot of people are scared to, to show failures, but I didn't give a damn. I was I was in it. And, and you believe in it. Yeah. Um, so then from there, I still didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I, I closed the gym, I think November of 2015. Um and I had opened up March of that same year, uh, stopped, and then um, for about a year, I was just an athlete, you yeah. know, I coached a few friends just just cuz with my equipment in, in my garage, my dad's like office garage. Um, and then I started working in LA, December, Extremely out of shape. We're 2015 or 2016 now? 2016. 2016. Okay. December 2016. And then December 26th, the day after Christmas. Talked to Joe like a couple days before. Shout out Joe Jacobs. Shout out Joe Jacobs. <laughs> I've talked to that guy years. Joe Jacobs, uh, whether he likes me or not, Joe Jacobs is one of the best people I've ever met when it comes to being so consistent and so, I would say, robotic. Mm-hmm. Perfect in, word. In in the best Un- way. Emotional. In the best way. Yeah. In the best way. A lot of people. From a professional perspective, that's the way to operate <clears throat> a lot. Yeah, so, I've, I've heard a lot of people say like, you know, I I quit LA because I, I was moving around a lot. They moved me around a lot of gyms. Mm-hmm. It affected my performance. I didn't perform well at the end of it. I got promoted to PTD fairly quickly, whether that's an accolade or not. Um, yep. it, it it ended up it ended up just going downhill fairly quickly at the end. Yep. Um, but Joe Jacobs, I've heard a lot of people like, I don't like Joe. I'm like, fuck you. Because if you would have listened, Joe Jacobs would have had a huge impact on your life. You also, you know what you're getting every day from a person, which I always yeah. appreciate that about mm-hmm. people too. So uh, do you know Ty? I've only heard of him. I was hoping he would, he would be here because I've, I've only seen the name <laughs> and I've seen it yep. through like Lance. Yep. Um, yeah, I've I've seen it through your posts, and I I've seen yep. it through being in in the in the system at yeah. LA, yeah. and like I just this name, yeah, <laughs> legend. <laughs> this, uh, I don't know, like so it was like, uh, like him and Joe are similar to me because they're like total polar opposites. Like Ty's very emotional, wild mm-hmm. dude in all the best ways, um, but you know what you're gonna get from those people yeah. every day, and as long mm-hmm. as I know what you're gonna get, I know that that's who you are. Whether you know. Whether you want to like go out yeah. and have a beer with that person, yeah, not, it's not the, it's not the. That's the not crux. the point. That's not the point. I I talked to this guy and he was, he was talking to me about. It. He's like, yeah, I worked at LA Fitness a long time ago when Joe was a PTD and, 
So that's how I started working for Joe's uh, assistant. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So he's like, "Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it, Joe." I'm like, "I just I'm gonna stop you right there <laughs> before you before you say before you start slandering. Bad. Before you start slandering, uh, I know I know what you're gonna say. People have said it. Rubs people the wrong way. Like and, and I don't give a damn. It, it really that. doesn't matter to me. Did I get upset at Joe Jacobs once or twice and said, "Hey, calm it the fuck down." Uh, yeah, he made a comment one time, and I was like, "Yo, comment that." But that di- that still didn't affect my views on on Respect. him. Like, I, honestly, some of the times that I speak to him, I'm like, I'm probably gonna take this and, and run with it for a really long time. Yeah. Um, You've never worked in a more structured uh, way, no, because of how and it was beneficial too, because of how unstructured fitness generally is. Mm. That when you go. Like, so I had an opportunity to work in other markets for LA Fitness too. And you go to other markets and it's like, you assume that everything's like indie. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not at all. Like it's, I, uh, close <clears throat> to fuck. I went to, uh, Sierra worked at LA Fitness in Houston for a little bit. Okay. I think, I think I mentioned that to you one time. Yeah. Um, I lived in Houston for like a year. Yeah. That was a year. You and I both, we, we never met up. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's fucking crazy. But, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Actually, it's a crazy year. 2018, I was down there. Anyways, yeah. um, I was not with LA down there, though. I was a lifetime down there. Yeah, and Sierra was, and I was just, she would tell me, and I'm just like, what? Yeah, it's not, it's not like that. No, bro. no, not at all. And I'm just like, oh my God, if I was a PTD here, it, oh, holy Superstar. shit. Holy shit, I would... Yeah. You know, I don't want to be arrogant, but like, god damn, we would have crushed it if it was the same squad from yeah. from like in twenty like twenty seventeen, the beginning of twenty seventeen. Yeah. Like Zach Cole, you, me, like uh, just Jack, like Jack Sorrell. Just Jack just, yesterday, actually. Oh uh, really? Yeah. Jack and like all those people. I was just like, and with Joe Jacobs behind it, I'm yeah. like, oh my god, crush. And crush. Ty, Ty, was, well, Ty was at that point probably in Kentucky or Ohio. Just absolutely crush it because I yeah. met some of the PTDs and then I had a super bad experience with uh, with the VP of, of memberships. Um, um, I who it is because I, I can't remember his name. Kane? Mike, I think. No, Kane, not Kane. I like Kane. I love Kane. Me and Kane me. was down in Houston at the same time. Yeah, same time, bro. Really? We went yeah. out to eat and shit. Kane, and Kane. Really? Yeah, yeah, we did. I we never did. met up with him. Uh, we went out to eat. I love. And Kane. I knew uh, his girlfriend at the time too. Uh, she was down there too. Yes, uh, crazy. Who was it? Mike. Uh, I Trankle. Trankle. So he had he in. had spilled the beans on Kane going down there. Mm. And I wasn't an employee. Yeah. He was just sharing shit with someone he didn't know. So right, then I call Sammy. I don't know if you remember Sammy. Talking? Sammy uh, Ali. He was a oh, GM. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sammy's my best. I'm like, Sammy, Kane's coming down to Houston. Of course mm-hmm. I'm going to tell Sammy. Yeah. It's my best friend. I don't yeah. give a damn if you don't want anybody to know. I'm going to tell yeah. Sammy. You should have told me. You should have told me. <laughs> I'm not an employee. Right. He gets mad, but I didn't Trying know. Or Sammy? Yeah, no. Mike. Mike. Okay. So Kane gets down there finally, and Kane's like, why don't you come work for me? Like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Right? Look, I, I won't do PT. I'll, I'll do membership. Mm-hmm. I'll come in as an assistant. Joe approved it. Yep. Even though I had quit all awkward and shit. Yep. Joe so no way to cleanly quit LA at all. No, not at all. <laughs> so, Joe quit, or not. Uh, Joe approved it, sorry. And then, Kane set up an interview with Mike. I get there. Mike turns around and says to Kane, he's like, I didn't know it was him that you were asking me to interview um and i hear him say well i know he can't keep a secret so i get up and i say well that's your fucking fault oh. immediately <laughs> immediately i had no hesitation yep. and it went downhill oh it turned into a whole whole <laughs> ordeal he's like so we ended up having a conversation i didn't i didn't work for him um it goes without saying at that point yeah <laughs> i didn't work for him um but no, I didn't. I didn't let him fucking bully me. Why should like, you? Like, you told me I'm not an Especially employee before you're an employee. Like, he's like, you're not my boss at this point. You're just he's like, so that. why should I hire you? I was like, look, man, honestly, like we can continue on and we can we can be completely cool about this. Yep. And just move on. So it didn't. Whatever, it didn't work out. But you should have told. Anyways, probably for the best. Yeah. So LA Fitness happens, and then in that time, I met. Uh, 
several trainers. One of the ones that will always stay that became a good friend of mine was Alex Baird. Uh, yeah. Alex Baird was Joe's um, golden child. Okay. In, in after you had left, I think <laughs> after you had left, it was, <laughs> it was Joe's I initially. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it, Joe used Alex. It all of us did. Yeah. All of us did really because it it was it was what every trainer that we had hired should be should have okay. been. Was he a uh, sales guy or he's no? He's just a trainer, trainer at okay. Southport. Nice. So Jack hired him. Mm. I met him. Became really good friends with him. Um, but his, along with other trainers as well. But me seeing some of the success stories that he had had, the the results that he had had, and being part of LA Fitness, and just really talking about weight loss yeah a little bit more than what i had because i had written like a diabetes paper when i was like in like seventh grade yeah so i had had some kind of fitness something in my brain right um yeah super specific yeah. so uh i had had something fitness in my brain I, I just didn't you know actually like you know put it out there yeah um in, in some kind of way but seeing alex have a lot of success at la me having a lot of success at the beginning uh, with getting promoted to, to PTD and actually having like 20k months like four you know four times in a row that felt great yeah and like hiring some trainers I even fired a couple at East fun. Washington that was the worst mm -hmm. um, but Joe wanted to, Joe, experience. Joe Joe wanted to fire them anyways but I was like yo yeah fucking trainers coming down <laughs> yeah that sucks that sucks Joe yeah. said in front of a trainer, he was like, I was ready to fire you, but Kevin told me otherwise. I was like, all right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so uh, no, just all that, the, the, the success stories that Alex is having, some of the other trainers, I think, got motivated from Alex. Uh, I started just putting this thing in my brain again of, like, weight loss, what I had experienced, like, in middle school, the thoughts of, like, diabetes and whatnot. Yep. And then I started niching down. Then I left to Houston um, about a month after I quit LA at the end of 2017. So I came down to Houston in 2018, in January. I didn't. I started working at Gold's Gym for a while. Yeah. I think I told you. Yep. Um, and I didn't go in as a sales guy. I went in as a trainer. That's weird. And I peaked at 34 clients. That's a it's lot. Fucking crazy. Crazy. That's a lot. That's all one on one. One on one at at, Damn, at goals. I was crushing. It's like I wish that L A would let you do that a little bit more. Like they off like so because I didn't realize until I got to Lifetime because even as a manager you have a client base. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was like a new trainer at that point because yeah. you've done like sales workouts, but that's not the same as programming and keeping clients. Like I was yeah. basically like a I hadn't trained before. Yeah. Really. So. I had gotten a lot of training out of the way with the gym. Yeah. With the garage workouts That's that people huge. would show up. I had a couple of success stories. Um, not major, just a couple. Uh, literally, probably like two or three. And went into LA, learned this whole sales thing. Then went to Gold's. And there was one experienced sales guy. The other one was brand new. Okay. So I'm coming in as a trainer, but they use me for sales sometimes too, which is how I paid that 30 something clients. Yeah. So whenever they needed that assistance, yeah. I would come in and essentially sell it. Yeah. Not completely. That's an asset. But the, yes, it's, it's an, I 100% it was an asset for that manager because I was coming in not just to say, Hey, yeah, we're going to have a great time. Yeah. And then, you, you know, I, I'm going to work you out. No, it was like legitimately like, okay, what are your issues? Yep. Yeah. Like coming in as a, a as fucking pinpointing everything. Yeah. So then I quit there not because of anything specific like moving or anything like that, but they hired too many trainers. They hired too that many trainers lot. and I was my retention rate because of payment at Gold's Gym yeah, was different. starting to come down. That's a different So of while I peaked at thirty something clients, I ended up finishing uh around like 10 to 15. Where in Houston? Where? Humble. So, or as they say, humble. Atascacita is up north. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I ended up losing clients and they weren't feeling 
fast enough because there was too many trainers. You got a hole in the bottom of the cup. It's not filling up fast enough. Yeah, so there were too many trainers, and they didn't need to hire anybody. Yeah. They had A1 trainers. They had me as a weight loss coach. Yep. Right? They had this other guy as, like, the physique guy. They had the older lady that was taking on older clients that felt comfortable with an older lady. Need that. And then they had the good-looking girl. Yep. It was perfect. Yeah. It, it, there, and none of us were full. Yeah, you can't rehire. So then they hired four trainers. Four? Four. Four. I so I'm, so I'm just anymore. like, yeah, so I was starting to lose people. I wasn't getting fast enough. And I decided to leave. And then I went to Anytime Fitness. Uh, Matt was the owner there. And then I had already had several success stories at Gold's Gym with weight loss. And that's when I knew that I was like, man, I, I, I fucking killed it with this macro shit yeah. with them. Um, you know, and, and, and all of it was, and, you know, it sounds horrible, but I was winging it yeah. in the best way possible, um, you know, with, with some kind of strategy behind it. But the strategy wasn't like, here's like this precision nutrition course that I'm taking. Now I'm going to apply it. It was like, here's this client. I know how to work them out. I, I, I know a general... Uh, you know, a, a little bit about macros, uh, general knowledge about macros. Let's get going. Yeah. Um, I had been using it on myself. Uh, Sierra even made me like this calculator. She's like super savvy with Excel. So she yeah. made me like this calculator where I just plug in the body fat and weight and all this shit. Legit. And it just pops up my macros. It's fucking legit. I don't have yeah. to do the yeah. math on paper. I don't have to use somebody else's calculator or something right. online. Right. Right. So, um, it's like, it, it was all great. So I went to Anytime Fitness and he essentially allowed me to sell my own PT, kind of create my own prices. And I would say, hey, I'm gonna, so he was, some of the trainers were charging like 40 to 50 or whatever. And um, he would essentially let me, if I gave him reason, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna bump this up. I'm gonna see how it goes. Yeah. And it was literally like, I'm gonna charge 65 a session. Yeah. And he's like, are you sure? Like, I think I've been doing this long enough that I think I'm in a comfortable space to start up charging a little bit yeah. for the value that I'm getting. Yeah, if I'm you feel like it. you're executing and you're giving them back. Because that's the thing, people will, if it works, people will pay an yeah. exorbitant amount of money. Yeah, I mean, my program's are two grand, 500 yeah. a month, yeah. 16 weeks. Um, I mean, people pay it, but I give. If it works, people If pay I it. sat you down, and it shows you everything, you'd be like, holy shit. But it's because I paid for business coaches. Yeah. I, I had a business coach from Ohio that helped me out, and then I took OCA, which is an online coach accelerator. Okay. Um, they're out of California, and actually I have a conversation with a new guy on Monday because my fucking business is plummeting right now. Tough time to um, be in fitness. Tough, business tough time days. to be in, in fitness, but I think a lot of people can benefit from a coach like this. So anyways, Definitely. I was crushing it. Honestly, there's no other way to say it. I was crushing it. My clients were seeing success. Um, I think I, at any time fitness, I beat that uh, 15 clients. Um, it was different because it was a smaller gym there. Yeah, if you have frequently, if, those, if you've seen those people three times a week, that's a, that's a full yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, so that's perfect. Um, but then I was also selling cars at the Damn. same time. So I would literally wake up at five, train for a few hours, yep. go sell cars, and then come Man, back and train at night. That's a hustle. Dude, I was... Dude, oh my god, I was point, huh? loving it though. Yeah. I was loving it. There was nothing about it where I'm like, holy shit, like I can't do this anymore. I was working out, I was partying with some friends, I was dating my girlfriend. Life is good. Like it's crazy. Not a nice apartment. Uh there in the heights. But uh, you know, that's that's essentially where I started the weight loss thing. And then I tried to do online and I sold the thirty five dollar program that I made monthly that took me seven hours to create of workouts and I sold it for 35 bucks I had eight people buy it yep and no one, nobody fucking did it that's the tough part <laughs> nobody I've, I've never did been it. able to master online so stuff upset. I've never had success personally online only because I've never really pursued it hard but it's just the adherence is so hard even mm -hmm. with people that you see in person that yeah. online has got to be tough Online is tough if you just give a program and, and dip out. What percent um, of online business do you feel like you do uh, of your of your current business? So, ninety percent. Really, ninety percent because uh, I only see one person in person right now. 
So how do you, what's that communication level? Like obviously they can get you whenever they need to text, but like do you have to like set like once a week we FaceTime or Zoom or whatever? Fridays, Fridays if everyone's available. Um, is it a group or is it one to one? It's a group on Fridays. Nice. The accountability call. Nice. If they decide to, to be in it. Wednesdays, I do a, uh, a written check-in. Um, they write or you write? I send them a form. Uh, and I have it on, on this thing called Airtable. And essentially, I send them a link in Slack. And they'll click on it and they'll pull up their name. And then they'll just answer the questions. Let me know how it's going. Yeah. Now, granted, I, I shoot them like... Uh, messages throughout the week if I can only problem is like first thing I say to people is if you ghost me this ain't gonna work yeah that's not what you're paying me for if you ghost me this is the only way that this is gonna work and and that's what people do they ghost me <laughs> it's crazy yeah, some of some uh, always will though it's like yeah, the same yeah. as like dating though like you wouldn't like you're not gonna get yeah, 100% you absolutely, you absolutely have to date your clients yeah you 100% have to date your clients which uh, sucks because a lot of trainers are too proud to Admit <clears throat> the idea that you work for your clients and like mm -hmm. so yeah sometimes like uh dude like so i had this uh the other day um so i got covid and i had to go back through like the people that i worked with the previous yeah. week and let them know right mm -hmm. and i had one guy that like didn't respond over the course of a week mm -hmm. and i'm like oh shit did i give him mm -hmm. and he's like pissed at me now whatever so i'm like i can either let that sit or i can like reach back out to him mm -hmm. And you be like, like you, you have, have to reach back you out have to them. reach out and because it, and their life gets busy and like I work for them. Like it's not their <coughs> responsibility to come to me. I gotta meet you, them. You have to reach out. You have to reach out. Um, and and when whenever you reach out, even after reaching out, sometimes the, the problem is like some people still end up ghosting you, and that's so yeah. that's so upsetting and it hurts. Yeah, and it hurts for sure. It does because I'm just it's like getting fired. It's getting fired. But look, I'm gonna be honest. Like I I still let the payment roll. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm not gonna get rid of this person yet. Maybe when that payment hits, they'll remind themselves. Yeah. Like, oh, I have a coach. Yeah. Um, we do it all like in person, like they pay like on a per session. So like, yeah. but I don't fault that because like a lot of people, that is their check. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, if they're paying for it, they'll use it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so, a gym membership. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, online weight loss. I have a whole lesson, like literally video. Like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll give them. I, I do my nutritional uh, meal plans through Evolution Nutrition. Obviously, I'm not a dietitian, so I'm not creating any meal plans for anybody. Right. Um, I'm putting together the macros, mm -hmm. the range of everything, the calorie range, coaching them through that. Yep. But the meal plans come from Evolution Nutrition. They give me essentially a really good template. Mm -hmm. The meal plan gets created, but but I go in there and actually make the changes for the food. So you get yeah. So I I have a client right uh, that I see in person, and the first one was a anti-inflammatory plan. I use the template from Evolution Nutrition. Um, he's a guy that is older. He's sixty. He, he's losing a lot of weight right now. Um, but the 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 template was from Evolution Nutrition. But I went in there and changed some things based off what they recommend yeah uh that should be in a certain anti-inflammatory plan right, his food preferences too like yeah that. some food preferences now it was like the worst program on the planet <laughs> when it comes to like and what kind of food he's eating because yeah. it's bland it's like yep. no one no one wants to eat like some of it was like i had to put it in there it was like celery it's like a bunch of celery and i'm oh. just like damn like i hate to do this but i have to throw it in there because it, it's it's part of it's it. medicine now yeah exactly so now i put him on, on like a more balanced nutrition plan uh, but it's through evolution nutrition and then uh, I essentially dish it out that way. I coach them through it Wednesday check-ins uh, I read the check-ins if if I need to respond I respond if I don't I don't yep um, You know Friday calls if necessary and then conversation. Yeah um, But they're getting programming dropped each week though to them or Programming or is month? programming is for the month. Okay um, Sometimes for two months in advance the one thing that they get uh is to train your eyes, so they'll get the, yep. the workout scheduled. And then the one thing that they'll drop weekly, or that I'll drop weekly, are the video lessons. Okay. And the video lessons are essentially, um, it's more so, it starts with a mindset, it leads into to weight loss, um, 
and, and not necessarily like just the macro side of things, yeah. but also like one of the videos is about like what you could do to absolutely ruin your one week of good macro counting yes. in a visit at Penn Station, for example. <laughs> right? Like if we're talking yeah. deficit and things like that, <clears throat> that's a funny which is idea, one of the posts, which is one of the things that you had sent me yeah. um, in the link. Yeah, was like the the calories in, calories out, the energy expenditure. Yep. Yeah. But like I made a video on like you're sitting there eating, right? At like let's say a ten percent deficit all week, and then all of a sudden you go and and have this Penn Station. Yep. Twelve hundred. You fucking really <laughs> yeah in in a in a medium sized sandwich yep right it's with quick. water with it's water quick. not even the lemonade <laughs> not Damn. even the lemonade or the cookies so like um you absolutely fucking ruin it so that that video alone and I'll share it with you that video alone has gotten a lot of good feedback like a lot of people will say like oh my god yeah I didn't know what I was doing yeah I thought that eating all week was was so good which get out of jail free card get out of jail yeah. free card which is is essentially that first post that you sent me was that yeah. people aren't succeeding because they're not looking at it like yeah on an energy expenditure uh perspective they're they're just thinking like i'm it's like being a good parent for 28 days of the month <laughs> in the last two yeah you know you probably lose your shit right and yeah. it's not the same it's not the same because you know you your kid at that point they're gonna be like, okay, maybe they just had a fluke, but your your body's not gonna say, oh, right. maybe you just no, it's gonna consume it the way that it needs right. to consume it. So people ruin their their shit whenever they're, you know, go through this like six day period or even seven day period. They're doing well and then like, man, I I deserve it because, yeah. but it's it's not deserve that. it is the is the the key. Yeah, on that. you yeah. know, so like. Because that infers that you've done something that is hard and not valuable mm -hmm. so that you have a license to do what you actually want to do anyways. Instead of exactly. being healthy is what you actually exactly. want to do. Uh, so, so that video alone is pretty cool. Um, what else? I, I, I take them through the macro accounting. Yep. Um, I, I really, I start, the, the first one is the mindset. Like, I made a mistake last month. I, I signed up a guy and, um, I should have I should have listened to my gut. He ended up quitting after the month, and he didn't yeah. even do the month. And my program is sixteen weeks, and I tell people like I'm not gonna take you to court, right? Not, I'm not gonna take you to court and go charge you, right? The the $5. nobody wins there. Nobody wins there. I'm not trying to ruin my reputation as the guy, the trainer that takes you to court, <laughs> right? Right. Um, and I'm not gonna be pressed about. Like, you should have done this fitness thing. Right, right. You know, start, like, pointing fingers and shit. It's a pain in your ass and their ass. Yeah, so, I, you know, I had this guy, and from the beginning, he was like, I just want to try it for a month. It's a low level of commitment. Yeah, it's a very low level of commitment. And, you know, he's like, you know, I, so what are you going to do? Like, you can't put me on a con. I don't want to do a contract or anything like that. And, I was like, dude, you know what? Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna take you to court, man. I told him straight out. Like, I don't usually talk to people like this. I was like, I'm not gonna take you to court, dude. I, I'd love for you to be part of the program for 16 weeks, because I, I know it'll work. You know, over the course of the past three years, 16 weeks is is my magic time frame, where people had just lost tremendous amounts of weight and have kept it off. Yep. Um. But he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how well that will hold up in court, anyways. And he's just talking to me like really <laughs> reckless. When well, you're already talking about how you're getting out of it, not a first, yeah. not a good first step. So, so the the first module in the program is about mindset, about how you should. Even though you already spoke to me about it, and I signed you up. I know that you're men you're mentally there. Mm -hmm. Besides this guy, yeah, in right? theory. Besides this guy, um, but I remind them again in the modules, the first in the first module, to let them know that you are here. But this isn't just like a a, a a thing that you're just like trying out. Like it, it's not, like I, for, for example, me, uh, the leanest I've been is probably like 10% body fat. Yeah. Right now I'm probably sitting at 23, which is crazy because I'm not like big. Right. I don't know where the fuck it is. <laughs> um, most of it's kind of fucking midsection when I have just gone. But um, these don't help too much. <laughs> last night definitely didn't help either. Yeah. Uh, 
but um you know i i don't i don't think that people need to be extremely lean all the time it's not necessary to live a good lifestyle to be practical healthy usually. it's not practical usually mm-hmm. um obviously aesthetically pleasing it, it's always nice to be lean during the yeah, summer of course. Or not. Um, everybody wants to have that but i try to remind them that it, to not just shoot for that that aesthetic is to to essentially remind themselves that there is a deeper reasoning for this yeah and and it goes back into like the the energy expenditure is like some people just don't don't think they they, they take to face value they take yeah. they, they go into face value way too much like they'll they'll look at something and be like yeah fitness is i should do that yeah i know i should be doing it yeah, but I guess why, why, why should you be? Yeah, you know, people don't really ask themselves that question. Yeah, because a lot of people they have to feel it, feel a difference mm-hmm. to actually. So a lot of people we're we're blessed. I guess like, like, when you've been in really good shape, you know what it feels like to be mm-hmm. in good shape, and then you can put together like if I look this way, I will mm-hmm. feel this way too. Most people don't have. I've never been in a like, good level of shape where they like know what that feels like. Yeah. So they start to associate what you look like as winning mm-hmm. when really what you feel like is winning mm-hmm. it's not it doesn't it, it's it's backwards until you've been there mm-hmm. because you can you can actually be i don't know because i've done fitness competition or a, a physique competition where you get down to like what seven six percent whatever i don't remember yeah but, so but you don't feel there. good Mm-mm. but at 12 percent you don't look as good, but you feel much better. You feel much better. So yeah. it's not like, it's not like the leaner you get, the better. Like there's an area of happiness in yeah. there that allows you to Absolutely. live your life, eat how you want to eat. Absolutely. I couldn't comment on being that lean because I've, I've never. Nor should you. I don't blend. I will never do it again. I, uh, because let's see, London was born 2014. My, my little girl, my six year old girl. Um, in 2014, 2013, I was 20 or 21 years old. I had just turned 20, 21. Mm-hmm. And I was, I just started CrossFit. Yep. Um, downtown Houston. I was in Houston 2013. Started CrossFit downtown Houston. Twice in Houston? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I was in I Houston. Uh, and I weighed in at 155. How tall are you? 5'9. Okay. So, but I was recently 21 yeah you know i just turned 21 in september and i started a good 155 or a bad 155 it was i think it was a good 155 okay now, granted i wasn't like muscle bound or anything like that I, i've always been a smaller frame but uh from 155 to a little bit towards the end of 2014 um maybe a little bit before i had gotten up to 198 in a bad way in a bad way. okay in a 198 bad way. for five nine is a thick guy that's a thick guy it, i don't know what, <laughs> you couldn't see it though that's the thing you couldn't see it my pants were fucking i couldn't wear any pairs of jeans i was wearing shorts and that was it i was extremely i had forgotten about fitness oh, straight no. up i had forgotten about fitness i essentially gained a daddy weight Ooh. I had gained the daddy weight. We had gone to White At Castle, 21? left and right, bro. We, we, dude, it was bad. I felt like crap. Yep. Um, Need that though. And you then know I dropped, how bad it feels. And then I dropped down to eleven percent by April. Whoa. From December to to April, I dropped some. No, a little, a little bit after that, I think. But I had dropped down to eleven percent, weighing in at one sixty five. Damn. I think. Damn. So I lost the weight. Uh, so I knew I could do it, but yep. I didn't count macros. I did a block a block schedule of, of eating at a CrossFit gym on the south side. What is a block schedule of eating? So it's like it's like macro counting for dummies. Okay. So if anybody wants to start a diet, the first one, like if, if you don't hire a coach, if you don't want to get nitty gritty with anything and talk to somebody, the one thing I've always recommended, and it's a cro- it was a CrossFit methodology. It wasn't. It's not a CrossFit methodology. It's just something that CrossFit talked about because it's so simple. Yeah. It's essentially like you got a, a cup of chicken 
and that's one block, for example, for your protein, okay. and you got a certain amount of blocks for the day. Okay. So it's it's super. It's kind of Weight Watchers y. It's yeah. So points blocks. Uh, mm -hmm. type thing, yeah. So, uh, paleo. Paleo is the the diet that I always recommend, just because mm -hmm. it's all it does is just remove a little dairy. My beef, my only beef is legumes. legumes. Can't do legumes on yeah. paleo. Yeah. I'm a so, big bean fan. Me too. So it, it just reduces a little inflammation fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people lose weight, uh, but you it cut it, out the bullshit. Everybody loses weight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So whenever somebody loses weight, like five pounds, I applaud you. But a lot of it is just a little inflammation that you're getting rid of. Pissing it up. Um, you know, some people be like, "Yeah, I was on a, a vegetarian diet for like a couple weeks, yep. and I lost six pounds." And I'm just like, "Good for you." Probably well, just two. Just remember, just remember that one you fluctuate, but two, you, you probably just got rid of some inflammation. Yeah. And that's all. It is. Which is good too. Like that might be just as good. Yeah. Like having less inflammation yeah, might be absolutely. just as good as losing fat too, because now you, your body's ready to lose fat. Mm -hmm. Actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see. From there, after LA Fitness, get back into that, or after goals, Anytime Fitness, did the online, tried the online thing. Stopped working at Anytime Fitness and came back and then hired my first coach to help me structure my online business because mm -hmm. the $35 program didn't work. I had a couple yep. of people who did like a $100 program um, and they were okay. Uh, I had a couple girls that did it, but they weren't really successful on it. Um, and honestly, it was just level of commitment. So... I need to figure out how to get people a little bit more committed on the online thing. Yeah, that's always uh, tough because if you don't see them, like the level of accountability mm -hmm. over the over digital communication is always more tough. Mm -hmm. Like the crux of it for for me is like with like with weight loss. Like what I guess what do you think big picture keeps people from succeeding in weight loss? Because like some stuff I say, like it continues to social life, man. Okay. Social life is is the big killer. Um, okay. And, and I, I think, uh, for example, I listen. I was listening to Mind Pump. Love Mind Pump. Um, it's Mind Pump. I love Mind Pump. So I was listening to them, and, and I can't remember his name on the on the podcast, but he was like, he said something that that I guess it really isn't about social life, but it it it's, it kind of goes into that where if someone wants to succeed. And weight loss mm -hmm. and and let's say you're doing it at home yeah and one of your issues is I snack a lot mm -hmm. um, and I've always told people this too and, and it was just nice to, to get reassurance from a thing like mind pump yep um, so like, why don't you just go home get rid of all the sweets that you have Snickers yeah. chips whatever the hell right throw it away and if you really want it, you're yep. going to get the fuck up. Yeah. And you're going to go to the gas station. Yeah. And you're going to buy it. That's a way bigger step, though. If you, yeah, if you really want it. Or, yeah. you end up fighting the urge. Mm hmm And you sit your ass home. You put, you put <laughs> one extra step in between you yeah. and making that <clears throat> shitty mistake. You put, yeah, you put, the, you put the extra step. And it, it, it helps. Now, when you transition something something similar to that into a social aspect when you're in a social setting all the time when you're hanging out with people all the time mm -hmm. and you're going out all the time and especially if you're not going, a big problem right now but yeah know. no like okay so like let's say you and i hang out yeah. we're we're not going to other than the drink yeah, um, you want more ice though i'm gonna grab some ice absolutely ice. Yeah. no but like let's say let's say you know we we sit there we have a couple of drinks right yep but that's that's our that's our thing, right? Most people will, um, you know, go out and go drink, but also get food by the end of the night. Yep. But you know, and like that's their socialization, and they think they have to go and do those things and, and buy yep. charity foods or pizzas and things like that in order to fit in. Um, but let's say you take the social aspect away, you don't socialize as much, right? Um, and you know, you, you, it's kind of like you, you take away the, the stuff at the house, right? You don't have it available. You know, yeah. so you don't have your friends available. 
You take away uh, the, the social aspect. When you're just chilling at home, you tend to think deeper and then you don't make those mistakes. Yep. So I think social social things, which kind of leads into the second thing that you sent me, was that some of the, the women in that, in that um, post was, I think it was one in four that it said 25% of the women that were losing weight didn't need to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Why the hell do they want to lose weight? It's a social thing. Yeah, it's a one hundred percent a social thing. People think they should always be trying to lose weight. But yeah, that's like the life that they live. That's that's the. It's like I, I lose weight. I'm looking in the mirror. It's okay to be a certain way. Interesting that you bring that up too, because I think a lot of it is. Uh, well, first of all, it's all psycho- it's psychological. Because if you really wanted to lose weight and you're like no frills. I always tell people, well, how would your dog lose weight? If you're gonna like, if you have, I have a dog. If I need to, my dog needs to lose weight, what do you do? That's good. I remember that. You feed that. him less. Yeah, 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 yeah. You walk him more. Period. There's no like, how many carbs does he eat? Yeah. None of that shit. Yeah. But uh, from cool. the psychology aspect of it, people, and it's very similar to smoking in this capacity, mm-hmm. is people identify themselves as somebody that's trying to lose weight. If you accomplish that, mm-hmm. now who are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How do you shift from somebody that's like in the shape that they want to be I ask, and I ask move people, your lifestyle in a different way? I ask people if, if, if anything could happen in a perfect world, like 90 days from now, what would you want to happen? What would you love to have happen in 90 days if we could look into the future Yep. and you're looking back? What would it take for this to be the best in 90 days, 120 days in my case? Mm-hmm. Um, what, would it, what would it have to be in order for it to be the best or yeah. most perfect ninety days. Yeah, and if people are like, I wish I lost weight. Um, but then sometimes now that I'm thinking about, it, I'm saying out loud, is that I have to remind these people, like, hey, remember I said ninety days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say, I didn't say like it's just gonna magically happen. Right. Or in my case, like again, sixteen weeks, one hundred twenty days. Right. right. You know, ninety days or one hundred twenty, whatever. One hundred and twenty days. It's yeah. gonna take that time. Yeah. I didn't say it's gonna happen because you hired me and you're paying me five hundred a month or whatever. But right. nobody, nobody like plans their life after either. Mm-hmm. Nobody plans like, okay, now I'm in the shape I want to be in. What does that even look like? Yeah. So I, th- I think a lot of it, like, go back to your to your question is, what is the biggest one of the biggest roadblocks? Um, if I could rephrase a little bit, is yeah. is the social, yeah, the social stuff. So. So what do you do to work around that? Like if you're coaching, you should have like, friends. What's that? Your friends love. Sometimes you gotta get rid of friends. That's true. That's true. You just you just gotta say, hey. I, honestly, like I, I've been such a hermit. Not not because of COVID. Not because of COVID. I think COVID brought out the hermit in me. And it's valuable sometimes. Yeah, dude. I I, I bought a PC. Um, man, I've never regretted buying a PC till about a week ago when my dog got sick. Like and you're I, saying, personal computer like, PC, like a PC gaming PC. Oh, I gaming spent PC. so much money on this PC, and yep. then my dog got sick, and I had no money to fucking pay for the surgery. Oh, no. It's the worst. But we ended up covering <laughs> it. Oh. Uh, but like, I yeah, I saw that. Actually. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, because I like. Yes, crowdfunded I'm just like, a lot of it, didn't you? Yeah, I crowdfunded a little bit of it because cool. I'm like, oh my god, dude, what in the world? I just bought all this crap. I yeah. bought like. Bunch of shit. Well, you can't you can't expect or plan for your dude, dog. Dude, it was terrible. Was it? I was like, I was sitting there, dude. I was crying in the car. I'm like, this is my dog. Yeah. I've never felt so much pain. I was like, dude, my grandmother, my dad's best friend, and then my dog. Yeah. Like, those are like my three. My dad's best friend passed away years ago. He got killed in Honduras, and my Jesus grandmother Christ. died, and then. The dog was like the yeah. my third ever like oh my god yeah. that's my boy like, outside of your girl and your daughter like dude yeah, yeah. so it's like I'm freaking out I had never regretted buying shit yeah. ever in my life until that moment yeah. I'm like dude I'm like, damn that's dude I don't rough. even have PT money coming in to like a yep. few days from now <laughs> dude this is the worst um, and they had quoted me like five grand I was like oh my god dude I'm I can't do this I'm at the Give my dog up, surrender him, and it was Thanksgiving Day, so nobody's gonna answer the phones. No. Nope. Oh, I had to put him down. He's not eating five days, so I didn't put him down. He's good. Oh Everything shit! I thought you actually had no, to. No, no, no. Oh, thank God. No, no. So he's good. He's good. Uh, he's at the house. <laughs> uh, he's chilling. But dude, I had never felt so much pain. I don't wish that on anybody. But yeah. 
Uh, now he's good now, everything's straight. <laughs> but those were my options was to pay the three to five grand, uh, which I ended up getting it a whole lot cheaper with a different crazy story. Yeah. But like, it was just a lot of money and I was like, dude. You ever look into the pet, pet health insurance field? So it's actually, actually pretty we, legit. We looked into it a little bit. I'm just like, I didn't get too much information and we're just like, you pay like this is 20, crazy. 20 bucks a month or something yeah. like that. And it's like anything that comes up, like the 20 bucks a month is like, it's you're going to send, you're gonna have to send me, yeah, you're going to have to send me, uh, yeah. which one you use. Um, because I'm definitely going to have to get it now. The dog is like the biggest investment I've ever made. I think my dog was like, you got a grand. Friction, don't you? yeah, yeah. So like, mm -hmm. and he's the best dog. Like, mm -hmm. I'm biased, but he's like the best dog. <laughs> uh, but my dog is the best. If anything <laughs> happens to him, man. Like, I don't have kids, but like, man. No, I have. I have problems. four dogs. I have four dogs and shit. Uh, Leo is my oldest. Tried. I gotta try. Leo is my oldest. He's seven. Well, he's he's about to be seven uh, this next year. He's six. I got him when London was born. As a puppy, they grew up together, huh? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, so they grew up together, uh, and then Zeke's a little Chihuahua that we have that we found in Houston. Tommy's like this kind of ugly little schnauzer. <laughs> I don't know what he is. Good thing he's Tommy can't listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's but, and then and then Raleigh's the uh, the schnauzer that we have, but it's like a generational thing from the family. So there's like he's the fourth generation of schnauzers in the family. Oh, so I was freaking out. I'm like, you yeah. know. How is it that my schnauzer of the family right. is the one that has like the... That's the one that had the issues? Yeah, so he yeah. ate Sierra's underwear and it got stuck in his intestine. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god, dude. It's, yeah, we're glad Riley's okay. It's crazy. So anyways, going back to the social thing, honestly, like, it, it really is just a social thing. Like, when you go out, dude, if you go out, let's say you're going out to the bar and you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drink. That's why, honestly, that's why, I, like, I structured this podcast this way or the show, whatever you want to call it, like... I think it's important for people to see that people that are in shape mm -hmm. don't have to live this monk like lifestyle. Like, no, I'll drink, I'll do this three days a week and it's yeah. fine. Like, cause you have to have give and take. Like, mm -hmm. you work harder in the day, you eat well. Like, these two drinks are not going to affect no, no, what I look like. I've been, I've been, like. I've been lifting pretty well this week. Um, Even if you didn't, though, this would not be no, out yeah. there. Like, you yeah. have to figure out this balance. Like, you don't have to live this lifestyle where you're just like, I'm exactly. fasting all day and I'm yeah. eating fucking vegetables. Yeah. Like, like, this you week, need to be able to let the hair down a little bit. This week I worked out three times. Um, I think last week I worked out three times. The week before I worked out four. And I'm, I'm, I haven't gained weight. Yep. I don't feel like crap. Right. Um, I can eat certain foods, you know, and I'm still good. Yep. There's nothing, if anything, I actually feel pretty solid because it's consistent three days yep. a week. You know, it's heavy lifting. Um, you know, so it's like a good hour and a half. Yeah. Um, like, what do you think is the difference between people that can uh, consistently make progress with a lifestyle that includes something fun mm -hmm. versus people that just have this, like, all in and all out? Like... They're either like fasting all day. Yeah, you know, and they that was some rice. of the things in that in the second post was like, where um, do you find this balance? Because again, you work a lot more. A lot of guys, people that I work with, I work with a lot of guys, like middle aged guys with like body comp, so it's mm -hmm. not weight loss specific. Mm -hmm. um, so macros don't become as and, uh, um, as important. But like with the people you work with, what what do you think works long term? I mean, 16 weeks, you know, I would consider a long time. Yeah, long, because that, is, change that, your that life is a long time. Weeks. Um, say your question again. What was the... So, like, how do you avoid, like, the all-in, all-out and find a lifestyle that you can, like, maintain? Like, where you can go have a couple of drinks and enjoy that's your so, friends. That's so tough them. because, like, like, for example, I got a client. I got a couple of different clients, right? Yep. One of them is going through relationship issues. Aren't we all? Um, and, and considering like, you know, um, the bad route out of mm -hmm. a marriage. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is single. Yep. Doesn't have to answer to anybody. Yep. One of their plans, one person on one side can sit there and, 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 and go all in. Yeah. Cause he's, he's got the time. He's got certain, um, I guess different motives. Yeah. More more so personal. This is the single guy? This is a single guy. Yep. Versus 
the the girl that's going through relationship issues, her motives are um, more so going against the the person who she's with. Okay. Like I'm gonna do this to throw it in his face, kind of thing. Kind of. I yeah. would say maybe like or to prove, prove worth. Yeah, prove that's prove yeah. worth. Prove, yeah. prove something wrong. Yeah. It's hard to have the same answer for both. That's right. Um, I, I, it's it's hard to have the same answer for both, and and that's where the coaching comes in. Is that really? I okay. Honestly, I'm not anything special when it comes to to coaching. I'm just I keep people accountable. The technical information in terms of coaching, I don't think matters that much. Like you said, like yeah. the fact that you can, your clients can go there with you mm-hmm. and be like, "Hey, I'm having relationship issues." Already means you're probably a pretty good coach because, in my opinion, when you touch the emotional cord with them, that's what yeah. gets them to buy in and stick with them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you know, my clients are really good friends of mine. I would say, they gotta be. They have to be. Who else do you see multiple times <laughs> I, a week I was, besides your family? Yeah, I was I was laughing. With I don't even see my yesterday. mom multiple times a week. There was some stupid stuff. I was just dying laughing with this guy yesterday, my client. And uh, no, I mean, it's good things, but like, it's hard to have the, the, but if I were to say like one, one blanket statement is that just consistency, whether it's two days or three days, it needs to be consistency that's relative to you. Okay. So relative consistency for me is three to four days. I got a kid. Yep, dogs. I got a relationship. Mm-hmm. I like to do this. Yep, you know what I'm saying. Um, and I'm sore. Three of the other days, <laughs> <You're> not, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm right. sore the other three days. Yep. So I I have to throw that in consideration. But that's my relative consistency to me. Relative consistency to some of my clients is just three days. Yeah, just three days. No matter what, there's yep. nothing that's gonna change that. Yeah. Um, some people got kids, some people don't have kids, you know. Right. But it's like, like getting people to like commit to like what you know you can yeah, do and not like yeah. what's at the beginning, like what's what's the best week for you. Yeah, if you work out every day, that'd be fucking awesome mm-hmm. too. But like just not realistic. Yeah. Um I don't know if you listen to Barbell Shrug. Hmm. It's a it's a podcast I've been listening to since like twenty thirteen. I feel yeah. like I know those guys personally. <laughs> um been a long time, but honestly, like some of those guys have ripped. Yeah. on there and, and I'm not saying like they're shredded like 5% like they're just big dudes Yeah, you can tell that it, if they stop working out for the next 10 years it'd still be big yeah, right, right. Yeah. they're gonna be okay Yep. but like he was just talking he's like dude honestly like I get three workouts in a week and they're really hard one hour to yeah. maybe hour 15 sessions and that's it Yeah. and I gotta go I gotta go attend to my family because not only do I need to but I want to Yeah. and People don't understand that that is that is the long term answer. Yeah. Is that throw it into your lifestyle, but don't don't let it consume other parts of your life that you're already accustomed to. Yeah. Don't start making um, changes to your routine because hey, we're humans and you know habits yep. they, they they arise from from things that we do, but. If you could fit it in and just take one little thing out, that's what's going to help you long term. And if you take all these things out, yep. like let's say if you if you do socialize, let let's say you are the the social bug and, and you're you're going out and you're drinking, you know, Friday, Saturday, and then one day throughout the week you're going and hanging out with friends again, and you're you're the person that everybody thinks is crazy because all you do is spend your money on drinks or whatever. Let's say you want to get into fitness and the first thing you do is you get rid of all those all those times you go out. You're gonna be like, ah oh, man, I, I you're gonna lose yeah, it. You're gonna lose it because mm-hmm. but if you took one of them out, or even if you didn't take any of them out and you just yep. did it the hour before you went out, yeah. That would make it better. Yeah. So we do we do so we I do we do Taco Tuesday, we like a revolving Taco wow. Tuesday with a friend. And like Taco Tuesday is a sh- I mean, it's wine, it's mm-hmm. drinks, it's bad food but and it's every week mm-hmm. doesn't miss yeah but i don't ever think twice about taking that out because yeah the level of sanity that it gives me yeah is so much more valuable than yeah just chilling 
So what are you gonna do with six percent body fat if you're fucking miserable? Yeah. What are you gonna do with that? Yeah, absolutely. You gonna no, check no yourself cares. out in the mirror and then what? That's it, right? Hang out with no friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, but um, you know, going back to like some of those, some of those posts and some of those like um, some of those things on um, on the CDC uh, site that you sent me. Yeah. It. I. I made a post on my Instagram about the American uh, Diabetes Association. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll pull it up actually, put it on my Instagram. And it was interesting because it dove into body fat overshooting, right? So- Body fat overshooting? Overshooting is what they call it. Um, here we go, here we go, here we go, where is it at? Maybe I didn't pull it. I don't know, maybe I didn't post it on my, on my Instagram. Well, anyways, the, the post essentially says, um, in the first year after losing the weight, mm -hmm. a 60% of people, if I remember the numbers correctly, this is from the American Diabetes Association back in 2015, 2016, 60% of the people in the first year gained, uh, I think it was like 80% of the weight back. The, the second to third year, 80% of the people gain weight back. And then another um, 80, like another 80, 80 of that 90, 20 for 95% of the people from three to four gain the weight back. So almost, almost everybody. everybody. Not yet. So, um, pretty much. So essentially I got a, I got four a, years I got a 5% success rate. If I'm going to lose weight after four years. After four years, I got a five percent success rate. If I'm gonna be successful on that, bro, what's yeah. harder, smoking, quitting smoking, or or losing, losing weight? weight? I bet you that's based off American. It might be better, better to quit smoking. I might start smoking instead. <laughs> Shit. So um, <laughs> that's a shocking data. It is crazy. So huh. um, from there, uh, man, I need to pull this up. But from there, what ends up happening is that. Afterwards, body fat overshooting happens, which is essentially f year five and up. Um, a third of the people mm -hmm. that lost the weight end up gaining more weight than what yeah. they had started with. Yeah. So if you if you started with two hundred pounds, you're essentially going to gain. So if you're like 200 and you got you're gonna, 170, you're going to end over 200. You're going to end up 210, 215 or whatever. What do you, what's, why? Why do you think that's the case? Or does it say why? Well, most people, from the thing that you also sent me, is most people just stop eating. So they're like, so, wrecks their metabolic rate and then they... Well, no, imagine, the imagine if you're, if, for example, imagine if you didn't do your Taco Tuesday. Yep and you skip out on it for forever and you didn't have tacos for a year and then yep. you have this thing in the back of your mind and you just remember loving tacos. Yep. And you take it away and all of a sudden you got another Taco Tuesday, January, you're just like, go oh, ham. Fucking yep. give me 10 of those tacos. Yep. Give yep. me 10 of those tacos right now. Stop talking. And you should have known that I wanted tacos yeah. the moment I walked in the door. That's good. So it's yeah. like, uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm kind of upset that I don't know where that post is on my Instagram, but, um, no. So it, it essentially like it, it, it becomes, um, I think a lot of it has to do with that. What I just said, like you, you're, you're going and, and you love all this stuff again. And, and it's like the forbidden like, fruit. Yeah. The forbidden fruit thing. But at, at the same time, you kind of give up. You're just like, you think you'd give up? Yeah. After well, you've lost, why? Like, if you lost the weight, you get down from two hundred to one seventy, and all of a sudden you're back at two hundred. Yeah. Just like, yep. It doesn't work. Fuck right. yeah. You're just like, I, I don't even. That's the time when I think you, you know, start to identify yourself as like, I'm a person that's yeah this weight. And yeah. That's who I am. That's just who I am. And, and that's then, dangerous. That's extremely that's dangerous. Super dangerous. That's to super start dangerous. to identify yourself as. Something. Yeah, so you're just like, I'm thick. Yeah. You know, oh, that's a thick boy. But you could also start to, the sad part is you could start to identify, you could start to identify yourself as 
So I always tell, I tell my clients, I go, if you do things that in shape people do consistently, eventually you'll just be an in shape person. Yeah. Like if you thought like that, like yeah. the yeah. between the process, like but if yeah. you also if you if you think like, so I work with one guy in particular that's like, I mean he's a big dude, he's like three hundred sixty pounds, mm -hmm. and like, if this is not necessarily him, but like if you were that person and you just thought that like, yeah, I'm just a big dude. Like all of your habits are gonna start to track towards things that big people do, mm -hmm. and then you're just forever gonna be a big person. Yeah, I I have a few friends that, you know, could use some some help with weight loss or could use the the weight loss in general. Um, but I think so, like some of the big things is like, I think that losing weight is not cool. I think sometimes. Okay. Um, and and. And I say like socially that socially cool, like socially okay. cool. Yeah. I I think it's um, I I hate to say it, but like some people don't really give a damn about it. Like if you yeah. if, if you come up and and, and say, the, I'm not saying you specifically, just as a general. Right. And you go up and say, hey, uh, friend, I'm losing weight. I'm gonna start losing weight, and most of the time, it sucks. But you'll get a yeah, okay, cool, right on. At best. At best sometimes, but in all honesty, a lot of people are like, all right, well. Skeptical. Good luck. Skeptical. Good luck. Like, you don't need to lose weight. It's it's kind of like that, That like, um, if, if you have something wrong, you're stressing out, let's say a relationship breakup, for example. So somebody, somebody breaks up with you. Mm -hmm. Let's say you got a girlfriend, so she breaks up with you, and you come and tell me, and, um, and you're like consoling me. As a as a pretty good friend, I should say, okay, so what happened? Mm -hmm. And my response, if we're going textbook and what should really happen, my response should be like, well then don't be a piece of shit. Right. Um, yep. You know, or most of the time people are like, dude, you're a good dude, or man. fuck her. Yeah, or fuck it's, her, it's her, bro. It's on yeah. her. Fuck her, bro. Right. She's missing out, but in all reality, I think deep down inside, you don't know that you want that answer. Yeah. Just like in weight loss, you don't know that People you want, want you answer. to feel good. People just want you to feel good, but in all honesty, like you should say, okay, so like, what do you think you should do? Like, yeah. which is the weight loss thing is like, all right, I try to lose weight, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't lose it. And most people are like, ah, don't worry about it, bro. You look good, but. Why would I ever have tried to lose weight right. if, if it's not so much about maybe it may be the aesthetic, yeah, but it also may be health well, like wise. Want, but most friends are change. most friends are just gonna be like, oh, bro, you don't need to lose weight. You look good. But in right. all honesty, the friend isn't the one looking in the mirror. The friend right. isn't the one dating. The friend isn't the one having sex. The friend right. isn't you know. Yep. It's it's I'm the one doing those things. I decided to lose weight because I want to feel better about myself. For whatever reason. Yeah. For whatever reason. But most friends will tell you, which 100% comes back to that social thing. It comes yeah. back to the social thing. It, it's like most friends will just comfort you. Yeah. So well, that's what they want thankfully, to make you feel I have pretty good friends that are like, Kevin, you're, you're not shit. <laughs> <laughs> you need that. You need that. But thankfully, I have like Sammy, Sammy Ali, like, he'll tell me straight up. Get it together. Get it together. Um, and then sometimes he's like, you know, he can, he consoles me or whatever if I'm if I'm ever in distress of whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. But um, you need friends that will say, okay, so it's your fault. Yeah. Okay. Even if she cheated on you, everything's still your fault. It's still your fault. To live. It's still your fault. I'm blaming on you. Yep. Uh, I mean, you're gonna be like, well, why? Well, you shouldn't have dated that girl. <laughs> Apparently, <That's true. laughs> the best way to live life is to accept yeah. responsibility for everything that happens, whether it's your fault or not. Yeah. So some of the things I'm gonna pull up that uh, that that thing because I had it on my um, here the how Americans try to lose weight, and the first one is exercise. The second one is eat less, and then the third one, which is the one I wanted to talk about, was eat more fruits, vegetables, and salads. I, I was at the gas station. I like buying uh, the muscle books from the gas station. Okay. I probably do one four times a week. Okay. And people will probably be like, man, that's a lot of money because it's like $4. It is. <laughs> but probably four times a week I'm buying a muscle milk out of the, out of the gas station. So you have like a meal though? Yeah. So uh, I had one on the way here. 
and a and a Gatorade Zima so I can recover from fucking last night, my cousin. Electrolytes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, the fruits and vegetables is is so idolized as like this like if you eat it you're healthier. Yeah. And, yeah. And well, it's then, a hack to make people feel fuller. It's a hack. It's a hack. And at the same time... There's some health value to it. Yes. And at the same time, a lot of people don't realize that over-consuming those... Yeah. Fruits, specifically. Yeah, fruits, fruits specifically, yeah. Is... Sometimes people sit there and eat a bunch of watermelon, for example, yep. and, and, and <laughs> post about it. Yep. That's like, I mean, that, who yep. doesn't post about their healthy, yep. healthy whatever, right? You do something good, yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? So... Uh, I, I'm king of that. I'll post whatever uh, I got going yep. on. So, uh, you know, you're posting it, but sometimes, and people are going to be like, man, you're being so whatever. But sometimes all that watermelon is just as bad as like a Snickers. It's a lot of sugar. <laughs> it's a lot. You it's eat a lot of watermelon. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yep. So, uh, it's better then, than a Snickers in a vacuum, I guess. Too, yeah. Because you're gonna have to eat a lot more of it. But the problem, the problem with like the the promotion of uh, like fruits as a healthy option is that fruits get digested fairly quickly, and they have such a high calorie content mm -hmm. in some in some fruits, right? Like a watermelon, a melon, things like that, bananas. You yeah. eat two bananas, it's, it's quite a bit of carb. Honestly. Yeah, it's a glycemic index. Like, yeah. The fiber, luckily, will slow it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're sitting there, you're eating all this, and you don't really notice how much you consumed in calories, and then you're hungry again mm -hmm. 30 to, to an hour later. Yeah. And then you go and eat your meal. Regular meal. Your regular meal, and you just, like, consumed all this, like, food. Um, and then from there, let's see, it was drank a lot of water, Eight less junk food or fast food. I go to McDonald's. Once a week. I go to McDonald's once a week. I love yeah. McDonald's. Why not? Uh, a lot of people are like it's a great American business. Great American business. I go to McDonald's. Yep, all the time. So, uh, changed eating habits. Ate less sugar. Switched foods. Uh, ate lower carbohydrates. And ate less fat. Man, between number uh, three was the eat more fruits and vegetables. Between like number three, number four down, so, I like a lot. Check this out though: eight less fewer carbohydrates and eight less fat. Okay, so we'll we'll talk about that one because uh, people don't realize that those are the two energy right. You got macros. You got to pick one, and most people get rid of them both. <laughs> well, and then, and then, but they also don't get enough protein either, though, which yeah. is 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 probably why most people lean on fruits and vegetables because yeah. they become. Especially vegetables, it's just fiber. The, so, sometimes uh, I'll, I'll speak to people and they're like, yeah, like I've, I've reduced a whole lot of fat, I've reduced a whole lot of, of, of carbohydrates and I'm eating more protein. Like, what are you eating? Yeah, you're getting 800 calories? What are you doing? How the hell are you functioning? Because right. your energy is coming from either the carbohydrates or the fats. You can interchange. You can go keto and, and do the fat um, mm -hmm. or you can go just regular schmegular, higher carbohydrate diet right. and be fine there too. But she, you're not going to get energy from protein. And on top of that, it, it, it takes some of that energy from the protein. The to, thermic value. To yes, the it. thermic value of the actual gram per whatever. It's like 40% off the top. Yeah, yeah. So you're really not, it's not like you consume a gram of, of carbohydrates mm -hmm. and everything is going into your system. You, you get some of grams it, of protein. It takes money to, four, takes money to spend money. Or, yeah. Yeah, so, or to make money. It takes You say, got to spend in order to make, right? Yep. So... A lot of people don't realize that. No one, no one will. That's not going to be a well-known thing ever. As right. much as I'd love to promote it and say like, "Hey," but you have to pick one. Yeah. And most people get rid of both. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, fats bad. Right. Carbohydrates are bad. Better is to get rid of uh, bad fats and sugar." What? Whenever. You're better off that way. The the answer I get when people ask me, "Hey, I'm going to go out or I'm going to have an event." How should I handle the food to stay within my meal plan or my macros or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then I tell them, okay, uh, it, are you going out to eat? One, okay, yes. Where are you going out to eat? Are we going to brew bird? Hey, so are you going to have a bird? Yes. Okay, so what does the burger contain? It's got bread, so it's carbohydrates. So 
mm -hmm. choose to eat less fat throughout the day yeah. and then consume the burger. Or let's say, hey, I'm going to a barbecue. Okay, cool. I'm assuming that there's going to be meat. There will be meat. There will assume. be meat at a, at a barbecue. Okay, so if there's going to be meat at a barbecue, you got to choose the fat content. Eat more fat at the barbecue no. and just don't eat the bread at the barbecue. Yeah. So it's just like one or the other. Yeah, if you pack, it if you works, package carbs it works. and fats together, you're going to have a problem. Yes, so you have to pick one or the other, right? Protein carb meal or protein fat meal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Both. Exactly. Protein fat, protein carb. So if someone's going to a restaurant, let's say you go to uh, Longhorn, steak, right? Mm -hmm. Eat a salad. Just have a little bit of carbohydrates, but you're going to have more fat content because of your steak. It's going to happen. You go to an Italian place. Most people don't have that, that awareness that they're like that protein no. and fat are like they assume steak. People put uh, foods into a box where it's like, yeah. oh, this is protein, this is fat, this is carb. Like most foods are a combination of all three yeah. in some capacity. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's still you're still gonna have some of it. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you're at a barbecue, there's gonna be some barbecue yeah. on the on the actual barbecue sauce. You're getting some carbs in there. Right. Right. Um, which, by the way, there's this like barbecue sauce that's like low fat, low carb, and it's amazing. Okay. I'll shoot it to you. Send that to me. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, but more than likely, your uncle at the barbecue isn't using <laughs> Most likely not. Most likely not. So, it doesn't matter if you got 200 yeah, chicken. Yeah, 200 yeah, quarter chicken. Yeah, 200 quarter chicken. <laughs> 200 quarter chicken. So, uh, no, but, and that's kind of the answer that I give most of my clients, and then they have a lot of success with it. Um, my client right now, his name's Kevin. Uh, he's it's convenient. Yeah, he's good. Kevin Jonas. Oh, so like the Jonas. Okay. So yeah, nice. Kevin Jonas. Shout out. So uh, I know he's lost. In the first month, he lost twelve pounds. Nice. Uh, yeah, hell yeah, nice. Um, but he had asked me a couple times about like going out to eat and stuff like that. And I gave him some of those tips, and he's been functioning just fine. Uh, granted, Kevin has given me 100% dedication. Um, I, like, I made a post about him the other day. There's absolutely nothing I can tell him to do anything better. Yeah. Um, it's not always the case. It's not always the case uh, with people. But it, it's, it's been a whole hell of a lot of fun because he'll, he'll ask me ahead of time. I'll give him the tips that I need to give him. And then he just executes. Yeah. He just executes. Uh, he's, a, he's, a very, he's a very can-do guy. Uh, but... Most people aren't like that, and it's because they, once again, I'll go back, it's the social aspect of it. Yeah. It's, the, it's the peer pressure, it's the, you know, it, people don't, people are horrible when, when it comes to, like, somebody wanting to succeed doing something, and then people are like, you're not going to do it. Right. You know, you know you're not going to succeed, blah, blah, blah. Got to have better friends. Got to have better friends. Yeah. And then you get shunned for saying that. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah. I don't give a damn anymore. People are shunning you. You don't want. Yeah. Re yeah. Exactly. Regardless of the situation. Um, so so what do you think? So this is usually like to end with a lot of people. So three qualities that great coaches have. Dating. So, what's that? Dating their clients. Okay. Like in a way. Okay. In in some way, you have to date your clients. Uh, Meaning, like you have to work on the relationship. You have to work on the relationship. You okay. have to date them. You have to ask them what's up, how's it going. I uh, know, granted, you can't make everybody talk to you, but that yeah. that would be I would say my number one thing is dating clients. Okay. Um, saying that you don't know something. Okay. Is another yeah. thing. You so don't have like you're the expert, but yeah, you're not gonna know everything. Saying that you don't know something. Uh. And then also, I'm not you, you're not me, kind of thing. Okay. And I've seen a lot of coaches um, train in the way that they want themselves to be. Like, I want to snatch yeah. 230, for example, right? Yep. I, Kevin at 60 isn't going to snatch. Nope, doesn't care. <laughs> doesn't, he doesn't care. Doesn't give a damn. Right, but I'm working. I'm sure. working on other things with right. him that are more important for him. Granted, I'll, I'll take him through somewhat harder movements that could potentially allow him to hook, grip a barbell and you know yep. get one thirty five up if he wanted to. But that's uh, not the goal. We're probably never gonna do that. Yeah. 
maybe if we're shooting the shit one day and we're just feeling saucy and we're just like, <laughs> you know, today, yeah, I'm see what we can do. Your mobility, you know, we're just gonna have a little fun day, yep, right? You know, kind of step into my world for a second, yeah, right, just just for the hell of it, okay. Um, but I think that's it. It's just a, a date your clients. Uh, I'm not you. You're not me, and you don't know. And, and that's pretty much what I would say. Hey, stay off your phone. Stay off. That's real. And stay off yeah. your phone. It doesn't even go with me. well oh. in here. It's in here because it's, yeah. it's working the music. But other than that, most of the time, honestly, this actually was good for me. Uh, so we Bluetooth speaker in here. Yeah. And I was like, I almost require some people to. Yeah. You got to do the music. Yeah. Because music is so personal and it's a huge part of the workout. Yeah. And like if it's your like I'm you don't want to listen to what I want to listen yeah. to. Yeah. Because if you train like somebody like that's like sixty. Yeah. They're not gonna listen to what I'm listening yeah. to anyway. It's so, different. Um. All right. So you got date the clients, work on the relationship. Mm -hmm. What's the second one? And then uh, you're not me. I'm not you. Okay. Yeah. And then the uh. I think that was your third. That was your my third one. Day. The date your clients uh, say that you don't know something and yeah. you're not me, I'm not you. Yeah. I like that, essentially. And, and that's kind of the... Because that was me at the beginning. Is I, I wanted everybody to overhead yeah. squat a certain amount. Right. And that was, a, that was a big problem. That was a big problem. But the good thing about it is that I socialized a lot with like CrossFitters and whatnot at the time. Yeah. But like, I was never going to branch out into a weight loss thing if I had kept going down the same no. route. Yeah, if you stuck in the CrossFit lane, you're gonna have a very small group of people that are gonna work with it. Yeah, yeah. So that that was pretty much my my biggest thing, and then the the bonus one, stay off your phone. Yeah, that's huge, dude. That drives me nuts, bro. And like, I see some trainers at at Indy City and other places, and I'm just like, it's it's fine to pull out your phone and take a video of your client. Yeah, right? but like, if you look like you're just if you're doing something outside of yeah, like so a client the other day, I was working with a guy, and we had a debate on whether or not they allowed f females into the special forces, the military. Yeah. Random argument. And it was like, well, let's fucking check. Pull it out. That's fine. Yeah. We're talking about it. But if you're put, taking it out and like shooting a text to somebody yeah. else, can't have it. Yeah. Can't have it. Dude, man, it, it drove me nuts at LA Fitness. So Spoiler alert, they do not have females in the special forces. Yeah. One person uh, became a Green Beret. That oh. was it. I didn't know that. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, I'm, so where, where can the people find you? We'll link up some stuff uh, in the post, but uh, Instagram and Facebook. The boot camp gets posted on Facebook. That's kind of the 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 hot ticket, I would say. Okay. Uh, the six dollar boot camp. Who wouldn't want to be? What's the handle? Uh, Benegas Fit. Okay. So it's Benegas Fit, and okay. I think it pops up on Facebook too. Okay. Uh, that's the Instagram one. So B A N T E G A S. Okay. Um, and then on Instagram is where I do most of just like my general posting. Yep. Um, it goes to Facebook, but I don't post much about the bootcamp on, on Instagram. Lives bootcamp. on IG. Okay. The, the bootcamp lives on Facebook, and then most of my stuff is is on is on Instagram for sure. Um, yep. But yeah, the the hot ticket is the the Sunday ladies bootcamp. What time? Where? One at Indy City, Indy and it'll City be Barbell. continuous. It'll yeah, okay. Indy City Barbell. Uh, but that'll be, I did it before, but it was just a six week thing, but now it's yep. just going to be every week, every, every week. weeks, uh, whether it's me or if I am out of town or for whatever reason, somebody's going to be coaching it that I trust. Um, uh, but more than likely they're going to do the boot camp before I allow them to yeah. coach my, they got to survive it before they, they got to, yeah. And they, and they got to know the girls there. You know, yeah. like the, the girls, they tag, you know, a lot of them are the same ones and they tag, you know, their friends and whatnot, but they know me. Um, you know, last night, one of them was at the party that, I, that my cousin's thing and it, it, it's just a personal thing, like a personal level of, of the boot camp. It's, uh, like I said earlier, it's, it's a safe haven for some of them. So yeah, yeah. boot camp is a hot ticket thing. Okay. And then, uh, the one-on-one -on -one coaching in person, um, one hour coaching, however many times, and then the online stuff. Cool. The online stuff is, is big. It's a huge lesson. Hopefully, I can turn that into something bigger. Honestly, yeah. Hoping to to really scale that. And that's the way PT is gonna go. It's just how do you make it yeah. work work for your people? I know some coaches that have been doing a tremendous job with it, but I need to figure out yeah. what I'm doing wrong. In person will be less common. As it moves forward, most people will work out in their home, I think, yeah. especially. 
yeah. mirrors onto something. I don't think mirrors the answer, but mirrors close. I think mm-hmm. I think mirrors got a good. Mm-hmm. I think they're ahead of it. Like Peloton, mm-hmm. Peloton and Mirror. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Peloton is cool. I do, I do their um, their biking stuff. Yeah, uh, I have I infinite bike. clients that are ordering. Peloton I don't have I don't have the Peloton bike. I just have another bike, but I do the classes on there. Yeah, it's not the same because the Peloton is like right. elite. Yep. freaking bike. I think it's legit. Like, um, but no, yeah, it's, you got it's, five it's grand cool. sitting around to get a one. <laughs> right, right. They're expensive. But yep. Yeah. No, that's that's pretty much it. Alright, man. Well, appreciate you coming up to Carmel. Yeah, hey, this, that, this area is kind of cool. Like, yeah. I was driving up and I'm like, I didn't realize. Yeah, I live like half a block over. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize how cool all the all the city center stuff was. Yes, yeah. it's, it's definitely it's considered a midtown. Uh, we got like a couple breweries, mm-hmm. some outside places over there. Yeah, I'm like walking distance from here. This is a mm-hmm. this is a nice place to be. Yeah, it's it's cool. I, I didn't realize that all this. I had it's really new. A lot of this is this is not new, but like uh like the breweries and stuff over there, all that stuff is pretty new. Like the Monon runs through there, all that stuff is nice. Mm-hmm. No, it's it's definitely a cool cool environment over here. Yeah. But yeah, right on, man. Podcast. Appreciate you coming by. This video is brought to you by UberFit. Looking for a fitness program that works for your busy life? UberFit is the premier on-demand fitness solution for Carmel and Northern Indianapolis. UberFit coaches bring the gym to you, offering a full health club experience and equipment package, including free weights, squat rack, conditioning equipment, and the guidance you need to perform at your best. Prefer a more traditional gym experience? Schedule a time at UberFit's private studio in downtown Carmel. Make fitness fit. Visit uberfitindy.com to schedule your day one today.